<laughs> Anyways, before I get down to a specific topic, I just wanted to leave, uh, you know, sometimes people have questions. So if you have any questions um, pertaining to Torah, to Judaism, whatever, whatever, you know, yeah. the kind of inyanim that we discuss, I'm open to questions too, uh, if anyone has. Um, I have a point hi. I'd like to make. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, hi. Good morning. Good morning. Just going to answer that for 10 seconds, Ramesh. Sure. 10 seconds? That's it. That's Very it. Busy. This is um, uh, uh, to Kvadarav, Rabbi Ruven Man. It's a great honor to present you this gift as a sign of deep gratitude and appreciation for giving the shiurim here at the Bet Midrash. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Very nice. Wow, this is the Torah. Wow. This is the Torah, yes. The first volume. And there's quite a few perushim gathered together, including the perushim of the Rebbe on a certain Allah. Well, that's great. I love it. Thank you very much. Very, very appreciated. I mean, it's a pleasure to give the class, you know, for its own sake, but this is definitely appreciated. And whatever ideas, I'll share them with the group. So, Correct, uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, be well. Uh, I want to give a check for the uh, Matanas Levyon and for other things. Uh -huh. Great. I don't have my check but with me. Would you be in touch later? I don't have it with me today. I'll have to bring it maybe next Tuesday. Okay. I write out checks. I've written a lot of checks, you know. So uh, just the earmark for Montanus Levionim, and then other, you know, well, I'll give you a bigger, for other uh, tzedakah. Okay. Shkayach to you. Thank you very much. Give my advice to Goldberg. That's nice. Present. Who doesn't like to get a present? Surprise. All right, anyways, was that, you said, somebody said they had a question? Yeah. Not, not a question, but um, uh, a, a point, and it has to do with the, uh, we're commanded, to love our uh, fellow Jews as ourselves. Right, the Ahavta L'Reicha Kamocha. Which is not an easy task. No, it's one of the hardest mitzvahs. And it's the, coming up in the Vayikra. And according to Tanya, it's explaining that um, we have the uh, godly soul and we have the animal soul. And if we look at the animal soul, it is impossible to love another person as yourself. Because there's always a battle and a competition, the animal soul representing the uh, material world is always dealing with the principle of scarcity. However, with the godly soul, we have infinity. There's no issue of scarcity. So it's through the godly soul that we have the potential of of uh, dealing with other people as we would want to deal with ourselves, emphasizing the love rather than the scarcity, the fear, and the competition. Okay. So it's the godly soul, um, and you, you seem to uh, not agree with that. It's a part of Hashem. What do you say? I don't agree. With I, I seem to recall something. Uh, that no, I have. A, that's not my issue. No, I agree with you that there is a God, if you want to use those terms, I don't have a problem using the terms a godly soul, a divine soul. I use that expression. Yeah. That may, This is a very, very significant point that you're making. I think, okay. I think that the, when they say, when it says in the Torah that you should love it. Yeah. Reacha, Reacha means your friend, yeah. but your friend is fellow Jew. That's the obligation that's, that's of the after, with regard to fellow Jew. Because he is like you. Love your, love your friend because he is like you. He has the, uh, the godly uh, soul of uh, the same scared, as you. Scared about it. Okay. It's not, it's it's not that you should love him because... Uh, in short supply. Huh? Any other reasons? Okay. Like yourself? No, because he is yourself. He's the same as you. He's a Jew. See, that's a person. very, very significant point. It's very difficult, it seems to me. It's very difficult in this day and age. We're always affected by the culture of the time. And I would put it in different terms. I mean, I'm not, you know, not that I'm denying, and I'll explain what I mean by the godly soul. Okay? The, the prevailing attitude in today's society is self-gratification, self-gratification, or, or the term, I'm sure you're familiar with the term that's used is narcissism. Narcissism, you're all familiar with that term, right? Mm -hmm. that, that essentially is to say that uh, the, the, the whole purpose of existence is to fulfill yourself, to fulfill yourself. You see, if a person, and, and I'll, go, I'll go one step further with, you, with regard to the issue of the soul, and, and that is 
that um, modern man denies that Adam B'Talmo never, that man was created in the image of God. The reason is because he does not look at himself. He looks at himself as being essentially an animal, essentially an animal, sophisticated, more sophisticated than the other animals, okay, but not possessed of a different dimension, of a dimension, uh, you know, which, uh, which enables him to relate to, to a Kaddish Baruch Hu, and so on and so forth. See, if man is basically an animal, that's a very crucial thing. If he's basically an animal, then he exists for one thing, to gratify the self. So therefore, he said, I, I, made this, I gave this talk at a chup, under a chup, like a wedding I conducted. Okay? And people, they never heard the, these kinds of ideas under the chup. Because uh, I was explaining why the, why the Sheva Brachas. The Sheva Brachas is... Um, uh, Asha Asha by Asha on the Batalmo, you know. Uh, but so I, I'm saying these are wonderful ideas, but what's the connection to a wedding? What does that have to do with a, with a wedding? You know, like it should be maybe Roshani Yom Kippur. We're talking about the the glory of uh, Hashem that everything was created for the the Chavodo, for God's glory and so on and so forth. So the, my basic idea was I was saying that uh, I gave like a shear. I gave I gave like a Dvar uh, Torah under the chuppah. And people loved it afterwards. I got phone calls back in uh, Phoenix uh, days after that. Oh. I said, I said that. Um, take a look at our society, our culture. The the what's the most basic theme of the culture? What does it talk about? Then the music and the um, movies and the books. Everything is about one thing: love. Love. Love is the highest ideal of our culture. But it's, it's, it's self love. But it's about, as I said, but it's a big failure. If that's the case. If everybody is pursuing love, and love is the ultimate good, and everybody wants it, so how come it's such a failure? Because I said the divorce, rate, the divorce rate is the bit higher. I mean, uh, in, in actuality, people can't attain it. So I said it's because of this. See, because when a person views himself as just being a more glorified animal, he's incapable of love. You know, is love possible in the narcissistic era? Why? Because he can only love himself. Right? He can only love himself. So when he says he loves somebody else, he doesn't really mean he like I love you because you please me. That's that's why I love you. But once you stop pleasing me, then there's no reason to love. That's the so I, I said that's the reason why the, these brachos. Uh, it's a different. The whole framework of the uh, of the Torah is that Adam that man was created in the image of God. That's a different dimension. So 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 therefore he. He's capable of recognizing the creator of the universe. See, then I can, I can love another person because I see in that person a dimension to sell and look at. In other I wanted to say that love of your fellow man stems from love of God. That's the foundation, the foundation of foundations because you love Hashem because you recognize the ultimate goodness. Therefore, I love the other person because that person it reflects, has the virtues, the values, and so on and so forth. I see in that person a reflection of the Creator, and I love the Creator, so I love that person. So that, yeah, yeah, so I'm saying that's the only, that's why Chazal ordained these brachas, the true love, the true love is not, see, the instinctual, people thought that I was, people liked it a lot, they never heard this kind of stuff under a chuppah, but they thought I was denying the whole uh, emotional attachment, I'm just talking about this exalted kind of love. You were so, denying the Beatles. So they, so they asked him, did you mean to say that a person should just fall? I said, no, that I don't have to talk about it. Everybody, everybody knows that. Of course you have to have a, a, a physical attraction. You have to have an emotional attraction. But that's not enough. That's just the beginning point. You see, that's what, that's what draws you to the other person. But that love is going to fall away. You see what I mean? That love is going to fall away. It's like the booster, you know, like a rocket that goes, the, the, initial, the initial thrust, that, that rocket falls away. In order for the for the relationship to continue, it has to be based upon a different kind of a love, which which has to do with a recognition of the qualities of the other and you know, those elements that stem from the Salamalakim. The Salamalakim, that's the expression, which is the image of God. If it doesn't lead to that, see, that's why it's a very big problem with Shaduchim. That's why it's a big problem. Because couples don't know what the purpose of dating is all about. And a lot of couples they go out if there's an attraction. The attraction falls madly in love. I always tell people, don't don't ever make a decision while you're madly in love. It's because you're blind. <laughs> you're blind. That's good. Go through. You don't go wait till so wait till that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly. It's a good point. It's a good point. Okay. Yeah. Wait till that feeling, that powerful feeling, dies down, 
Then you got to get to know the person, what their beliefs, what their ideals, what their virtues. Then, then you have to see. But uh, but people think now they're searching for that thrill. They're searching for that. They want to for, the infatuation. That infatuation. But that cannot last. It's such a big misnomer. It can't last. The most powerful. You read about these. Um, Hollywood stars and so on and so forth. Ah, the most powerful love, and they can't get enough of it. And bingo! Then a few months later, it's over. They measure it in milliseconds. <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah. you're right. If it lasts a few, if it lasts a few, but that's that's the huge, huge mistake. A very, very big mistake. Uh, and people, mamash, people don't know how to go, how to date, what the purpose is, and courting, and so on. What to look for? What do you have to look for? In, in another individual. See, that, that is the difference between, like you said, infatuation and true love. True love is a different type of phenomenon. If you really love the person, okay, because you know the person and you recognize their virtues, then that's going to be, that'll be permanent. Now, getting back to the phenomenon of the Ahaftal Recha Kamocha, I just want to say at this point, see, the Tzalam Elohim, the only difference I have with, with the, uh, where I resist, you know, those terms, because it sounds to me like you're saying mamash that there's an actual piece of Hashem in each person. That's contrary to the whole thing. You're saying God is made up of parts, and and, and you can you can separate a part of God. No, God is the source. God the the cell molecule is something which has been created. It's akin to it because it, it elevates you above the instinctual because it gives you the capacity to think and to form ideas. And to relate to Hashem, it's a reflection, it's, it's me'ain, it's, it's akin to what, it's godly in that sense. But it's not mamash in that sense. It's not, I don't, I don't believe that, because then you're, you're um, subjecting, you're saying that God is made up of parts. And you can, uh, that's already um, a physicalization of God. And you can't, you can't think of God in those terms. Hashem is always separate and apart from his creation. Uh, okay? Doesn't manifest himself in that way, in that direct way. The shit is different. Who? In Bereshit is written very differently. And he did blow from himself. That's his... not, that's the way it expresses the idea. Dibra Torah, Beloshan B'nai Adam. Very important point. And, and, and Mikre, you said me. It also says, no, not true. Sure. That, that is the Pshat. Yeah, but you have to know what the Pshat is. The Pshat has to be worked out in accordance with absolute truths. You can't say that God has, that God smells the Reich Micha. You can't say that. You say, so uh, the, the way the, uh, all the great uh, Rambam and all the Rasad Yagan, all the great philosophers understood this. You can't, if you're going to interpret that way, it's going to lead you, it's going to lead you to false ideas about Hashem. So that, that, that is, that is the Pshad. The Pshad is the idea. No, no, Chacham didn't believe that. That no, that is, Balatanya is not a chokhan. Look, I don't know. I'm not talking about the Balatanya. The great, I'm talking about the great. The yeah, but we talk. We talk about the Rishon and we talk about the Rambam inside. You talk about people on a different plane. Nachmanides. Uh, he, he says you can't interpret. He says that's not for you to interpret because you're not. But you don't have the Kabbalah. He says don't don't try to interpret what I'm saying because you don't have the Kabbalah. Okay. So he said if you try to interpret it. That's what he says. He warns people. If you're going to try and figure it out with your own logic, you're going to come to ruin. The reason? What about him? He's speaking you about... Know, if he meant it, I'm telling you like this, I don't want to be disrespectful. If he meant to say that God can be measured in physical terms, no, then that, that's clear. That's it. It's so I mean, so then it can't be. It can't, it, can't, it can't be. I mean, if, um, if you're telling me that... Uh, Is there a mahut? Whatever it means in Hashem. What do you mean by Emahut? We don't know and God. A, an essence. We can't, yeah, there is an essence. So we, we, we partake don't know. part of the essence of God. Well, that's a different story. So we're akin, but not not physically, not directly, not 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 that a part of no, you. We're not saying it's physical. Exactly. We're, we're not saying that. So, so then are you saying what I'm saying? You see what I'm saying? I'm saying, yeah, it's God-like. It's God-like on a certain level. It's akin to God, but it's not actually God. It's not like there's something that actually was part of God and now he infused it in me. That's what I'm denying. You see, I'm saying it, my, I told you what I'm saying. It's God-like. It's the image of God. It's the Tzalem Elohim. More than that, when people start, people go around believing it in a very literal sense. And that already is a complete distortion of the, this is the most important idea that we have. What Our is, idea of Hashem is the most important. Yatera. What's that? 
Neshama. It's an additional burst of uh, spirituality. Put it that way. So it's, it's additional. The same thing. The same thing if you say that they yeah. are part of God. You have a, you have a, no, it's not a part of God. That's wrong. Why say it that way? When you're saying when you're saying it's a part of God in me, what aren't you yeah, saying that no, God has? It's a good what you say. Yeah, aren't you saying that God has parts? That how how can that be? That that I can transfer a part of me to you? I can do that. Yeah, I, I can donate. Like you know, I can uh, excuse me. You can you can um, you know donate a kidney or whatever it is, and then there's a part of me and you. But that's because we're physical. God is not physical. Chas v'shalom to even depict it that way. We're not saying physical. Than us and the animals. Then. What's that? What's the difference? In there's a, there's, we have a different dimension. By the way, there's, there's such a thing called malachim. There's such a thing called angels. Okay? And what are angels? Okay, so the Ramam, this is the Ramam's view. It's not just the Ramam. And that is that these are beings that were created by Hashem. It's not Hashem himself who is a part. He created these beings. They are pure spirit or intelligences without a goof. Without a goof. We, there's, three, there's three different dimensions in the creation. There's those things that are pure uh, animal. Animals, okay? Instinctual. That's it. Then there's man. Man is above that because he has two components. One is the physical, the instinctual, just like an animal. The second one is the neshama, what we call the neshama. That is the ability to, to, to contemplate, to think, to, to consider, to, to relate to, to Hashem, okay? But we still have the goof. That's the, that's the um, nature, that's the issue as far as man is concerned. The conflict between the guf, the body, and between the neshama. Then there are malachim. Malachim are higher beings. That is to say, they are pure intelligences without any physicality. So they don't have any bechira. They don't have free will because they only, they only do the good. Because they, they're not thwarted by their animalist. They don't have animalistic desires. Now, now separate from everything, separate from all of that is a Kari Baruch who is the creator. He's the creator of all of these things. So the way I understand it um, is that he created man. He endowed, that is in addition, an additional element exists within man. He endowed man with a, well, we'll use the term, a spiritual or neshama, a soul, which enables him to function on a higher plane. Okay? So that's, that's from HaKadosh Baruch Hu. That's akin, because God is pure. God is the, you know, the, the, the truest existence, so to speak. Okay, that's all I'm saying. I'm not going to argue forever. Anyone that says anything that puts God in a physical light, I don't care if you read the Torah. The Rambam says this. The Rambam says that uh, there were people that took the Torah literally when they weren't supposed to take the Torah literally, and they came to a vodazar. They came to a falsification. They, they believed, they envisioned God as having physical, because the Torah does describe God that way, that God will get angry. I stretched out. God will stretch out his, his mighty arm. Does God have an arm? It's it's Dibra Torah Belashon Bnei Adam. In other words, the Torah speaks in the language of man. But some people had the wrong idea. They took it literally. He says they don't have a share in the world to come because they gave up. They gave up the true idea. Even though even though they were misled because they they read the Torah in the wrong way. And I said that's a tragedy. That's a tragedy. But but nevertheless. So so therefore, it's extremely important when you study the Torah. Okay. To, to understand where the Torah was just trying to convey an idea, but it's not to be taken literally. One of those things is when it comes to Hashem, depicting Hashem. Hashem cannot be depicted in any way that would indicate that God is, is physical. God has dimensions. God has emotions. God gets angry. God gets angry does not mean he's boiling. He can't say, God created you. God created you. The Ramban says this. There's in nothing. What, in what, one is it, in what is it just different from a goy? One second, one second. There, 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 there's nothing that you could do for God. God is a perfect being. He doesn't need you. He doesn't need you. So your service does not enhance God in any way. So, so do you think that, um, that, uh, that, that, that this being, this being that Hashem created, okay, he created purely for your benefit. And the whole Torah was for your benefit. He's enabling you to partake of existence. He's enabling you to partake of truth, of ideas, and so on and so forth. Is okay. our soul pure? Well, one second. Okay, let me get the, let me, <laughs> let me deal with one question at a time. The Jew is different than the guy in the sense that the Jew has the Torah. It might, if the Jew keeps the Torah, he accepts the Torah, then he's, uh, of course he's and different. And if a guy accepts the Torah. Then, 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 then he can convert, he can become a uh, uncle. But he's not a Jew. He can, if he converts, he's a Jew. He doesn't. 
If he doesn't, 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 if he, doesn't, what, he can read. What is a Jew different from a non-Jew? He's different in the sense that he keeps the, the Tariyag. No, no, I'm sorry, yeah. it's not true. No. You can keep all the, the, the Tariyag mitzvahs and not being a Jew. Well, that's not so easy. Didn't do no, a guy, a guy is limited. Excuse me. A guy is limited to seven mitzvahs. Seven mitzvahs, but I know. I'll get to your question. Right. A guy is, is limited to those mitzvahs. He can, what can he study anything beyond that? He can, since, since he can't partake of the entire system, so he's limited in terms of the level. If he, of the partake, level. If he partakes. How is he partaking? He's, a, he partake, he's, a, he's, he's not allowed to. He's studying. He's not allowed to just study Torah as much as he wants. You know, like he has limitations. And he does. He has, all right. I don't know. Somebody is coming in. He's saying, I am a Jew. In my opinion, you believe him. In my he's opinion, studying, in my, this is my opinion. Okay, I have to tell you what I really believe. So you don't have any difference. If a guy, no, the there's difference, no, the I don't difference, believe, I, I don't see, I may be wrong, I could be wrong on this. Excuse me, the okay. difference is just the behavior. The, be, the behavior, yeah. Is that the difference? That's right. Oh my God. Because, because, if the So guy, if a Jew doesn't behave? If a Jew doesn't behave, and he, uh, He's a Jew, he can lose. Yeah, he's a Jew. He can lose his... Why? According to what you are saying. He can lose his chalik in Olam Haba. A I'm not speaking about my bar. I'm speaking what is the difference? The difference is the level of perfection that a person is on. A person attains a level of perfection. According to the Rambam, he attains a level of perfection. He's worthy of Olam Haba. He's perfecting his neshama. Now, this perfecting is not an answer. Why is that the an answer? answer is what is the difference between a Jew and a not Jew? The Kedusha that he achieves. Oh, if you talk of Kedusha, what is Kedusha? Kedusha, well, Kedusha has to do with the way a person um, lives his life. He he restrains himself, he controls himself, he does good deeds, and so on and so forth. So there's no intrinsic difference. Boys I don't think so. I'm sorry? I, I don't think that there's any intrinsic. I may be wrong. Uh, what? I'm sorry? One thing they do have Jews have is they're connected to Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov. There's a blessing. That is correct. If they are. If they don't acknowledge all of that, if they live no differently than a guy, if a Jew lives no differently than a guy. What is a Kohen different from a Levi or from a Misroy? A Kohen has been designated for a as Kedusha. Kedusha of a Kohen. Kedusha was endowed, Hashem endowed the Kohen with Kedusha because he's designated to do the Avodah. Now listen to, listen to me. If this person doesn't acknowledge it, okay, if they deny Hashem, if they deny Torah, and they live like an animal, like anybody else. So what's the difference? If they are a Jew. Is that better? You saw they're a Jew, so how are they different than a guy? But he's a Jew. So what does that mean? I'm asking you. I don't know, no. A Jew has the two sides. I don't see what it means. If the, if the guy, if the guy is what? living like an animal, two souls. okay, God he violates God. everything. If a guy, if a guy, living, if, if a, a guy is living as a saint, as he's a saint. on a, je, all things, if he's living in sin. So what's the point Not that he's a saint, Jew? like a saint. If someone is, is is behaving like a saint, not being a Jew, right? Is he a, the same? Well, you had people, and the uh, you had people. You had the Avos. The Avos reached the highest level of perfection. They weren't Jews. It was before there was no Jews at that time. Well, the, the, well, the sons of they Shem reached the highest Yankos, level. There, is... there were other people, Shem and Aver. The yeshiva. Of, you, you've heard about the yeshiva of Shem and Aver. Okay, right. the Shem and Aver. Who went to study in the yeshiva for fourteen years? He went to right. study. Yaakov Avinu went there for 14 years. So Shem and Aver, Vayitim on Mice and Nicole, Malki Tzedek, they were great people who were able to access these ideas before the Torah was given. Okay, Avram Avinu lived according, they lived according to the true ideas and they elevated themselves to a high level of perfection. That's Kedusha, that's why I understand it. And they weren't Jewish. Jewish comes into the picture later on. So again, again, I, I believe that if a if a Jew renounces everything and commits every aver in the book and so on and so forth, so I mean he's destroying his soul. What what where's the uh, sanctification? What what why do I care that he's Jewish if he's a Russian? A, a guy could be a Russian and be Jewish. It's not impossible. Now now well, so it's, the Russian is coming to say it's it's unlike the say the Russian is coming right. Well, he's still he's still interested in the seder, so we'll talk to him. But it says Hakeyashino. Hakeshina ben Marlo, right? Ani v'lo God. Um, what does it say? But by verse that Asa Hashem li, because of this God did for me, me and not him. Ilu hayasham. If he was there, he wouldn't have been redeemed. Ilu hayasham. Right. Achsham. I know that. Achsham okay. is there. Right. Listen, listen, listen. We could argue this all day long. Uh, I respect you. I respect all of you. Uh, I'm telling you my 
I'm steeped, I am very much steeped in the philosophy, the Ashkafa of the Rambam, of Sad Yagon, of all of these, the so-called rationalist phila philosophers. And, uh, you know, you want to you want to say, say, hi, here I'm not going to argue anything like it's Kfira. When it comes to depicting God in a physical way, then I'm going to say that's Kfira, you're not going to do that. When you want to believe that you want to believe that there's something intrinsically superior, that's okay. I'm not. Uh, I'm not saying it's different. Superior. Different. Different. Well, different in a good way. <laughs> different in a positive or different in a negative. Listen, What's the point of being different? Is it good different or bad dogs, difference? But what? they are different. Two dogs are two dogs, but they are different. But when you say different, this one is different in what way? You have a sense that this one may be better, this one may be worse, this is nicer. You can't just start saying different. Okay, okay, but I'm Lashem. Yeah, we're different. We're, we're that, exactly. We're different because we have a special relationship with the Creator. No question about that. I affirm that and over and over and over again. We have a special relationship with the Creator of the universe and Atta uh, Bechartanu and so on and so forth. But that means, see, that means Kadoshim Ve'atem Tiyuli Mamleches Kohanim Ve'gai Kadosh. You shall be unto me, says God, a kingdom of Kohanim. I don't want to use the word priest, whatever it is, and a holy nation. Okay. Now listen. Who says this? In, in, in the case in the case of Korach, you know the rebellion of Korach. I'm sure you know. So Korach complained to Moshe Rabbeinu, like you know, you've taken you've taken too much uh, nepotism, too much power for yourself. You know, you became the king, Moshe became the king, and you appointed uh, your brother to be the Kohen Gadol, you know, to be the Kohanim. And he says we're all equal. <laughs> he says no. He said Ki kol elok elokulam kedoshim. Ubasocham Hashem. Because he was wrong. Why are you putting yourself over the, the congregation of God? The kola eda kulam kedoshim. So what is that? That's true. Isn't it? Isn't it? Isn't true? They're all coded. No, Rabbi Hirsch, I think says different. I think it's Rabbi Hirsch. See, because he was misinterpreting kedoshim to you. Kedoshim to you means you shall become holy. He was taking it to mean you are holy. You're intrinsically holy. That was his mistake. He, we're not intrinsically holy. We have to strive. Kedushin is something you strive for. Kedushin to you, you shall strive. You're not intrinsically holy. Is our soul pure? Is it holy? In what sense would you mean pure? Is it holy? It's, it, 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 it's a good question. Um, when we, we were born, we're holy. Yeah, this, then, then, the, the, the soul can be, it's affected, it's influenced by your choices. The soul is influenced. So if you do good things, so then you perfect, the soul needs to be perfected. I, 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 here's the, hold on a second. The soul is not intrinsically perfect. The soul has, that's your task in life, by the way. You're given a neshama. The neshama is not tainted. It's not tainted. Your task in well, life the is... The neshama is the intellectual part of the soul. There are other components of it as well. Right, but essentially, okay, fine. Your, your havana, your capacity for understanding and for choosing, okay? That is okay. the, I'm you, what's that, what's that, what's that, what's that, what's that? We pray... I'm saying in English, says, my God, the soul which you have given within me is pure. That's what we say every day. It's Correct. Pure. Yeah, I know. So what does that mean, though? It means it's not tainted. It's not tainted. I, I by my actions and my choices, have the, I, either I can make it tainted, I could, I could uh, you know, could cause it to, uh, to become deteriorated or whatever, or, or I can elevate it. If it's not unpure, does that mean it's... Oh, pure but holy. what does that mean that it's pure? I don't have to do anything, so I won't do anything, and I'm just... I mean, that's given by There's Hashem. No sin in it. There's no... I know it's given by Hashem. I agree it's given by Hashem. But what is your task in life? Isn't your task in life to, to, do, those thi to do those things which purify the soul? Which to make the material more spiritual, according well, to... Well, what about you? Forget or about the... elevate the physical. What's that? Or to elevate the physical to it. Okay, or... that's part of... I, I got that. I got that. But, but, but the point of it is like this. You're not elevated when you, when you, when you resist, when you have desires and urges, okay, and you simply follow them and give in to them. Are you affecting the soul or not? Sure. Yeah, you're harming the soul. You're making the soul more dependent. It's like an addict. It's like you're giving uh, drugs, you know, and you're becoming more addicted. On the other hand, when you resist, when you resist, and you say, "No, I'm not going to do it. I'm going to use my mind." Is this? Is this? Or you're hungry, and there's food, this tray food, and you're really, really hungry, and you say, no, I'm not going to do it. I'm going to, I'll take the, I'll wait until I can get kosher food. You're strengthening the soul. You're perfecting the soul. You see? So, uh, the task in life, 
the task in life, I mean, okay, fine, that's a nice expression to elevate the material. But, but, but that's not, that's not the, the whole essence of what we're talking about, is to elevate yourself and to become a different, a, a person who simply follows his instincts is behaving like an animal. That's the animal principle. The animal principle is, is to simply live according to your instincts, to live according to your desires. That's one of the ideas of Kashrut. Is there anything in the physical world that's pure? pure. I don't know what the word pure, uh, no, it's neither this or that. It's all, it, it depends on how, there's nothing, I'll tell you like this, there's nothing in the physical world that's um, evil. We had that in last week's Parsha. I wrote it, I don't know if you got my Dvar Torah. The, did we discuss this, the mirrors? You all heard this idea, everybody writes about this. In, um, in the last week's Parsha, by Yakil, that uh, when it came time to make the Kior, to make the kior, which was the basin. Was, the women ah, the so the women donated. What was the story behind? Moshe at first rejected them. Moshe at first rejected the mirrors. They were made out of, uh, they were copper, very shiny copper. So you could, because in Mitzrayim, the women used these mirrors to entice the men. They would go, the men were like downtrodden with work and this and that. They had no desire to be involved in, 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 in reproduction, okay? Uh, so the women would go out to the fields and bring them uh, food, and then they would take out the mirrors and they would start to like play games with them and so on to get them aroused. Okay, okay. I'll use a uh, lush in the key over here. You follow what I'm saying? Ah, so Moshe, when they brought the women, boy, they said, "Oh, the key or use the mirrors." So Moshe at first rejected them because that's associated with uh, Puravu. That's not the uh, you know. That, there's a very important teaching over here. That shouldn't be. That shouldn't be in the Mishkan. The Mishkan represents Kedusha. It represents holiness. So what are you talking? Mirrors? Mirrors, which is about vanity, you see, and which was used to seduce. And so, uh, so Hashem said, no, accept them. He said, Hashem says, this is the most beloved of everything. Wow. This is the most beloved of everything. Why? If you want to talk about elevating the physical. Because something which is uh, the sexual instinct. I said, Judaism is different than other religions. In other religions, that's evil. Sex is evil. Okay? Judaism doesn't want to look at it. That's not, not the case. Sex was created by, uh, by God. That whole phenomenon is created by God. So you can't say that it's evil. You can't say, well, yeah, fine. You can't say, excuse me, you can't say that it's evil. But that's the doctrine of the church. Is that the... Uh, I, I'm saying they took something physical. And they it's use it. If it's used for the right purpose... They brought it to Irish for Yes, okay, okay, fine. But that's, I don't care that they brought it to, they brought themselves to a higher spirit. In other words, that's living, that's living like it's selling all the can. We affect the physical thing around us. But why do I care? Again, I don't know, I'm not getting, that's not penetrating my head. I don't care if we affect. We need an animal. And it elevates How do we help I don't you? want to I don't want to elevate the animal. How do what? What do you say? <laughs> I, by being, how do we help them? By being rational. You can help me by being rational. I'm, I'm, I'm a little fine. You, uh, the animal doesn't need to be elevated. You need to be elevated. I need to be elevated. Okay? The purpose of kashrut, okay, is not because of the animal. The purpose is for yourself to exercise kedusha, which is to exercise restraint and to use the mind and to gratify your instincts in a manner which is conducive with your best interest. That's living like a human being. Okay, that's what I mean. I don't get, well, I don't it's care. It's a manner that's conducive to becoming closer to Hashem. To kedusha, exactly. Closer. Otherwise, it's physical. I understand that. Well, that is correct. That's, that's, one second, one second. That's the ideal to get closer to Hashem. That's perfection. That's why I'm saying, I mean, I don't really care about whether you elevated the animal or didn't elevate the animal. <laughs> what does yeah. Lot the Shaketsu mean? Why a guy or a Jew, there is a difference in the Lot the Shaketsu. What do you mean Lot the Shaketsu? You mean don't yeah, do disgusting I, things? Because that's, don't, that's like... Don't endure yourself eating not kosher food. That's Why right. a guy is not doing the no, same No, a guy is not on the same level of Kedusha. I agree with you. There is some intrinsic... Because God separated us from the nations and he wants... Not that God doesn't so care about it's just rational. It's not that God doesn't it's care about it. It's just something rational. Let me... Yeah, everything is rational. It makes oh. sense. Everything in the Torah makes sense. Everything is rational. Okay? And even... And, and anyone... The, anyone that puts forth an idea, okay, that you should do such and such, maintains that it makes sense, that it's the rational thing to do. Who says, I'm, I'm telling you something, but it's irrational. It doesn't make sense. Which means, not because it's right, not because it's rational, 
Because I'm telling you. Agreed. It's yeah. rational. Yeah. Yeah. It's not rational. It is not rational. It is rational. It's say Ani Hashem. It is rational. Listen, listen, listen. Rationality is not the end goal. Listen, listen, listen to me. If, if, if you're telling me that I should just do, even though this um, paraduma, you have a lot of things in the Torah which nobody can really explain. That's not, that's not rational, of course. <laughs> right. No, I'm saying it is, and that's what the the Ramban, the the, the, the Mefarshim say this. Let me, let me, I, I'm saying everything in the Torah is rational. God would never command you to do something which is not rational. To fill in. Let me finish. This is perfect sense. Let, let, let me finish. This is makes perfect sense. You need a reminder. That's easy. That's not a hard one. Now, the, the thing is like this, though. Let's say there's mitzvot that we don't understand what the reason is. Okay? Hashem knows the reason. But we're not saying that it's irrational mitzvot. No, this mitzvah is rational, except it's the deeper idea is hidden from us. You if we, under, we, if we understand look, it. Exactly. Mean, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Because you don't understand it doesn't mean it's not rational. Why? Well, Moshe Rabbeinu understood all the chukim uh, in the Torah, all the statues he understood. Okay, Shlomo HaMelech understood everything except, I think, for Paraduma. Okay, so one second, when he gains an understanding, it makes perfect sense. Now, it makes perfect sense for me to keep, to keep kosher, even if I don't understand why. Okay, or to do any mitzvah of the Torah. Let's say I can't understand why. Okay, why can't I uh, shave with a razor and so on and so forth. What's rational about that? Okay, what? Uh, it's ra- because if God commanded it to you, it's the same idea. If you go to uh, the, do- the doctor, the biggest expert in medicine, and he gives you, and he's trusted, and so on and so forth, and he gives you a prescription to do things which make absolutely no sense to you. You don't know why. How is this going to help you? Okay. Is it rational? Is it rational to follow his uh, instructions? Oh, yeah, the answer is yes, because he knows. He's, he's the expert. He knows. You're not the expert. You don't know. So the most rational thing you could do is go to the greatest expert and whatever he tells you to do, whether you understand it or don't understand it, whether it makes sense or doesn't make sense, you do it because it makes sense to him and he's the expert. So how much more so if the creator of the universe, how much more so if Akash Baruch Hu gives you a prescription of how you're to live your life and what you're to avoid, uh, to avoid and tells you to avoid certain things and to you it doesn't make any sense. You have no idea. Yeah, of course, I, it's rational to do it. I don't know, because I can, and it's the knowledge of God. My, my knowledge is on this level. I mean, it doesn't begin to approach the knowledge of so God. So God is telling you, kill your son. Yes, right? exactly. Perfect example. Perfect example. Could not have been would any Would you better. do it? Well, yeah, I would do it. Yes, I would do it. I wouldn't. Okay. So then, do you, do you believe in God? Yes. How do you believe in God? I, 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 because I say God couldn't ask me that. But what? But, but he did. What do you mean? You're going to he just didn't. He didn't. What do you mean? He didn't. So you think I? Aleu, lo veshachateu. So, uh, so, uh, so Abraham is wrong. So one second, one second, one second. See, that's a very serious issue. Hold it a second. Hold it a second. Now we're getting down to brass tacks. <laughs> Are you saying that Avram did the wrong thing? You know, they had it in New well, York. It wasn't wrong. Hold it a question. Hold it a second. Hold it a second. Hold it a second. Hold there is a question. Was. It was not rational what he did. Though. We, exactly. we, it's not rational. We, we mentioned that in the Tefillah, in the Musaf of Rosh Hashanah, yes. that God, Shekavash, that Avram conquered his mercy to do your will. Okay, so clearly they had a, they had a big thing um, in one of the shuls. Uh, I think it was with, who was the, uh, Brafman, Brafman was a big lawyer, yeah, you must have seen him in the paper, Brafman was a big lawyer, for the mobsters and so on and so forth, from guy, from guy, I know the from guy, guy. <laughs> he's a lawyer, Brafman, I forget his first name, Ben, ben Brafman, Ben Brafman, correct, so, so they had a, uh, what's that? The guy by the name of Edgar Brafman? It, he's, b- b- yeah, that's a different guy, that's a wealthy, that's a wealthy guy. Yeah, I think that Brahman is was involved in Seagrams. He was like the right, right of, the, of the whiskeys. Okay, what one, rational? One second, one second. So they had this big uh, round Rosh Hashanah uh, time, this big thing, and they had a, a trial. They're going to try Avram Avinu. Okay, whether whether he was like a child abuser, you know, like one of those, uh, you know, these modern people, they think they're so smart. And they subjecting what he did, you know, to their, and then they would vote. And the majority of people voted that he's guilty. Yes. <laughs> he was guilty. Okay, so, so I'm asking you, if you believe in the Torah, if you're a Navi, 
And God, so you're only going to do this. You're the one that's only going to do things that are rational. I'm not. I'm going to, I mean, they are rational. I'm going to do things because of a Muna in a Kaddish Baruch If God tells you to do it and you're convinced, the Rambam says that the purpo- one of the purposes of that test, that was a test, was to demonstrate the veracity of Nevoah. That Nevoah is real, it's true. God wanted to demonstrate, because would a person like Avraham Avinu, who was... Nevoah is not uh, One second, one second. Would a person like Avraham Avinu, who was on the highest possible level of compassion and, and wisdom and, and knowledge, would he do that to his son if he wasn't absolutely convinced that that's what Hashem wanted him to do? No, he wouldn't do it, so he did it because he's absolutely convinced. So therefore, you see that Nevoah is real. Not because it's rational. One second, one second, one second. Let's, let's get it clear. If that is the case, is it the right thing to do, right and wrong? The creator of the universe, who is the source of virtue, the source of truth, is telling you that this is what needs to be done. This is what you need to do. Is it right that I should do it or wrong? That, I, that I'm saying God is wrong? God, God doesn't know what he's doing? If you reject, if you reject, look, you can say it like this. See, when I said, I, see, I don't know if I'll, I would do it. I don't know if I would do it. No, you said yes. I, I know that. I, 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 I'm going to explain. I said yes, but then I don't know. I, when I said yes, it's the right thing to do. But maybe I don't have, it's also the right thing to do. Excuse me. If somebody puts a gun to your head and tells you to uh, bow down to what a voters are, bow down to it or I'll shoot you, what are you supposed to do? Let him kill you. You're not allowed to, you're not allowed to serve a voters are to save your life. This, in general, in general in Judaism, you have to, let me finish, come on. In general, in general, you have to save your life, okay? And you violate the whole Torah, including Yom Kippur, including Shabbos, if it's a matter of life and death. But there's three exceptions. One of them is Avodah Zara. So if a guy, if a guy, a cruel ruler, puts a gun to your head and says, I want you to bow down to that idol, or else I'm going to shoot you, you're supposed to say, go ahead, shoot me. Okay, now, that's what I would, yeah, but maybe I wouldn't have the guts to do it. That's all I mean. I may not have the guts. I mean, what if I can't do it? I'm, I'm so afraid of dying that I, I can't help it. Okay, it's the wrong thing to do, but the Ramam says you were, you were coerced. You're not going to be punished for that because you didn't have the control. You didn't do it willfully. You see what I'm saying? That's what I'm saying. If God, if I, if God told me, I'm not a Navi, but let's assume for argument's sake, if God told me to take the knife and to kill my son, I'm saying intellectually, yeah, I have to do it. Now the question is, do I have the courage to do it emotionally? That's all I meant. I may not do it because I may chicken out, but that would be wrong. In other words, if you ask me what should I do, I should do it. That's what I mean. I should do it because Hashem, if you, because if you don't do it, then you're saying Hashem is wrong. How do you, how do you know then, Hashem then you know, well, that, how do you know? The, the assumption, yeah, sure. so how do you know that God said, how do you know? How can that be a sin for us? Do repented. you keep no, no. Shabbos? How can it be a sin for us? How do you know? We don't know Hashem's voice. Okay, but let's... So now we know where if someone says you have to second. You're right. Son. But let's... Uh, my, We're not on that level. Listen we to me. Listen to me. That's not a sin It transcends for rationality. I'll be it's, able, like, it's like King David. David, for him, sending out the man on the front line taking my shiva, it was a sin. For me, it wasn't a sin. One second. I mean, it wasn't a sin for him. But, but you, you held this like, for argument's sake, though. Follow, follow this. For argument's sake, we're assuming that you suddenly will rise to the level of being a Navi. So you, you are now a Navi. You are now a Navi. Would you do it? I would do it. Well, I didn't, I didn't know you were a Navi. Yeah, that's not, but that's not, the, that's not the point. The point is assuming if I was. Obviously, I'm not a Navi. I'm, I'm telling you that. Well, of course, if you were No, a no, no, no. His Navi. question, no. Your question presupposes, your question presupposes, would I do it? Meaning, if I was in that matzav, if I was in that situation... And I was the Navi, and I received a communication from Hashem telling me to do like Avram did, would I do it? That's the question you asked. If I'm not a Navi, so it's not going to happen. Then there's nothing to talk about. We're having a hypothetical over here. Gentlemen, we're having a hypothetical. This is, you know, you've got to be a little bit abstract over here. I'm setting up a hypothetical. I'm admitting to you, I'm not, ooh, I never claimed to be a Navi. The whole question presupposes that, for, for let's assume, well, all the Jews at Sinai rose to the level of being, oh, well, we're all at Sinai now. We're all at Sinai now. We're all hearing God. There's no doubt in our minds. This is God communicating. If you don't believe that, then don't keep any of them. So how do you, why do you keep anything in the Torah? Unless you believe that God the commanded it. Trans- Rational. You believe that God commanded it. Commanded it. Hold it a second. Hold it a second. Rational. If that's the case, there's no difference. By there's rational. no difference between, excuse me, between keeping Shabbat, between Yom Kippur, between you know, keeping anything. Either it's from God, and I keep everything. 
even if it is by God. That's not, you want to reform Judaism where you keep, you pick the things you like and that makes sense to you and you reject the other things. That's reformed Judaism. Bottom line is you must decide, does this Torah come from Hashem? That's the bottom line decision. Exactly. If it comes so, from Hashem, then you got to keep everything in it, even if you don't understand it. And you ask me, is it rational? Of course it's rational, because it comes from God, so it must be true. Rational. It is it's rational. It supersedes rationality. You don't have to say it. This is where you have a problem. No, you have a problem. The thing, <laughs> you have a problem. <laughs> the thing is, when I say rational, maybe I'll use a different words. Excuse me. Okay, let me finish my, let me yeah, my okay. answer. I like to have a nice, calm, quiet discussion. <laughs> this gets me going on a Tuesday. I'm fine with you guys. It's all right. I'm having fun. Relax. <laughs> well, we're just pushing you to get everything out of you. You are? Okay. Go right ahead. It's there. I <laughs> built it up. I filled, you, you know, I try to fill up the tank. We're, we're, we're here, here to help. help. hear what you have to say. We have to squeeze I am trying to say, like, when I say it's rational, I'm, I mean, it makes sense. It is the right thing to do. It makes sense. Even if I don't understand the reason behind it. I gave you the example before. And that is the doctor who gave you a prescription. He's the biggest expert. He gave you a prescription which makes no sense to you. Okay? You're going to do it. Why? Is it, ra is it rational for me to do it? Yes. In that situation, I have no choice. That's the most sensible thing to do. we could potentially learn what the doctor has learned. If we, so, we could never learn what is Hashem. Why today. should that make the difference? So you're right. But be, humble. The difference. be humble. Be humble. Be humble. It doesn't mean to say that Avraham really understood the test. Maybe he didn't understand the but test. It says that he but, believes. but what? It says because you obey. You fear. I, I tell you that. Kirei. That's true. Kirei Elohim Who knows his voice? You're someone that, you know, he's a prophet. That's a different issue. Hold on a second. Hold on. Don't mix together different no, questions. But you Be very precise. Nobody Excuse me. Excuse me. You said You said Yirei Hashem. Don't yeah. understand Hashem. You're Hashem. You fear. You fear God. He fear fear is not God. rational. The fear over the fear here is not rational. Yes, it is. The fear over here is is reverence. It's a reverence for, for the creator of the universe. Okay? And once you have a certain sense, a certain concept of the awesomeness, it's awesomeness of the creator of the universe. The Ramam says that you study nature, you study the world, that God it ain't so if there's no end to his chachma, of course you have awe. So how can I say, no, that doesn't make sense to me, when the creator of the universe, the author of all of this wisdom in the universe has told me that this is what you need to do? Of course I have to do that. Of course that makes sense to do it. That's why I'm saying it's rational. Okay, stick with my, I'm, I'm very precise now in my terms. When I say rational, that's what I mean. Okay? Rationality. To reject it, to reject it would be irrational. Because you're saying that, well, what do you mean? God doesn't know what he's talking about? God's God's wrong? God's not ethical? What kind of talk is that? You no, say, it's not God's You're wrong. saying it doesn't fit into my, oh, it doesn't fit into my ethical system. Well, what's your ethical system? Batel ritzon chol lefnei ritzon. No, you have to nullify your ritzon, your will, your understanding goes out the window. Exactly. When it, when it comes into kind of with God. Exactly. <laughs> I rest my case. His he's ritzon, his rationality misled him. Who's, who's Mr. Avram? Mr. He did the wrong thing, you're saying? Yes. Uh, that's because, really, that's listen, a bit let problem. me finish. Because he saw what God, by rationality, he saw what God meant. And he was wrong. Because he meant Ma'aleu. He didn't mean Meshachateu. This is what Rashi says. That's not true. No, 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 no. Rashi says it. That, no, 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 no. He did the right thing. And he, if, you, if you, listen, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to be insulting or anything like that. But the proper... The, you know, it's like a Korah kind of a reason, a rationale, a reasoning over here. If a person walks away from the whole story of Abraham, which all of Jewish tradition and so on, that he's the great, he's the great here. God said to him, I mean, God rewards him. Uh, now I know, okay, uh, God rewards him for what he did. So you have to say that he did the right thing. And if you walk away and say, no, he was wrong, like these people in New York when they had that trial, that mock trial, that's, in my opinion, that's kfir about Torah. You're, you're denying the whole Torah. That is not Orthodox Judaism. That would be, I could see reform because they, they don't, you know, they don't believe in the Torah. They don't believe in Torah Shemal Peh and the oral Torah. But, but the, the takeaway at the end of the day, even though you can say, look, I have a hard time with that. I couldn't, I couldn't uh, do that to my son. Fine, you can say that. God's not asking us to do it. God wouldn't ask you to do it if you're not capable of doing it. Right. 
God is not going to saddle you. God is not going to saddle you with a challenge that you're simply incapable of. That would be cruelty. Avram was capable. Avram had free will. He had emotions. He loved his, like the Rambam says, he loved his son. But he overcame that because of the awe that he felt for HaKadosh Baruch Hu, and, and he did the right thing. Then Hashem stopped him because it was a test. He didn't know it was a test. Hashem stopped him. That is a great heroic uh, thing. That's part of our heritage. That's part of our look. That's what you got to think about. Okay, Abraham. That Abraham, and we pray to God that he, he stood up, bris. The, the, that's a major theme in the Tzvilos of Rosh Hashanah. Why? That Abraham did, 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 did not give in to his own personal emotions, but he overcame that to do the Ritzon Hashem, the will of God. That's why, a, that's did, why did God, God ask him, Malayu, and then the Malach, not God himself, said, it was, it was a Malach. It was a Malach. Okay, but the Malach was from God. The Malach did not, you have to understand, the Malach did not act independently over here. The Ramam has a whole section on that. By the way, I recommend this, this book. I don't know how popular this book is today. Uh, anyone familiar with this book? The Guide for the Perplexed. This is oh, like right. the great one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This is like my, you know how many copies I had that I, I used so much and, and, and uh, highlighted so much that I put them in retirement. I always have to get a new copy. And by the way, they have in, uh, for those who read Hebrew, they have some excellent critical editions, you know, uh, available. You, you he know, has a whole you, section on this. You know what Rabbi Cook uh, says about that? I didn't finish. You didn't let me answer. Excuse me. Okay. And that is that the... Um, all of the Nevi'im, all of the prophets, prophecy through the, the medium of angels, okay? The angels, so, so they, they, it's, not the, it's not like Moshe. Moshe Rabbeinu reaches the highest level of Nevuah, where Pel, Peso, so to speak, he communicates directly. The others are th through images, and they have to interpret it, okay? It's not the same degree as Moshe Rabbeinu. So that's why th 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 it's mentioning yeah, he goes through that. The Ram goes through that. All the various, you know, various cases of Nevoa where the um, where the prophet sees a certain image and he knows how to interpret it, just like Yosef interpreted the dreams of Paro, okay, and the dreams of the uh, you know the guys that he encountered in the jail. So that's that's the thing. The story. What you have to walk away with is that Avraham responded to the Kachnas Binchas Yechidcha Shahaftes Yitzchak. Got bring him up for an Ola, okay? Which the Ralbach talks about this. Well, you're right. It, it could it could have meant it could have meant just bring him up, but don't. But no, he he understood the true meaning was that you're supposed to slaughter him. That was the true meaning, okay? And then he's about to do it. He picks up you know the machelas. He picks up the knife, and then the malach the malach is the agent of Hashem in terms of says no, I'll tishlach yod Okay, do not, do not lift your hand to the Yanar, right? Kiyatu Yadati, because now I know. In other words, you've passed the test. Avram did not know, I'm saying, that it was a test. Had he known it was a test, then it would not have been a test. <laughs> and the whole test is really what would Avram do so in that situation? You spoke of rationality. Yes. But you spoke also fear. So I'm saying... Awe, the word is awe. Okay. I'm saying he was fear. He had fear of what God told him. Okay. Rav Kook says, you can agree or disagree. He says, when you do a mitzvah, you create a malach. Whenever you do a mitzvah, you create a malach. Okay. So when the malach came and told him, Anti shlach yadcha, Rav Kook, and also Rav... Uh, <laughs> no, 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 it's some, uh, some, some, some chosi. I don't remember the name. Said it was a chus. It was a what? It was a conscience that came in, in his brain, which is rational. This is exactly what you mean. He understood by rationality that God didn't ask him but ask him but it was his conscience and his, con his conscience came from God but it was his conscience so it, this was a ration rationality so that was but at the beginning it was, it was just fear okay 
fine. It's a nice shot. I don't personally. I don't accept that. I don't think it's. I don't. You know, it's a nice shot. But uh, fine. I'm not going to argue with it. As I said, plain shot. The, the simple shot is that Abraham passed the test, and he was prepared to slaughter. And then the Malach, which is Navua, intervened and told him no. Now that says no. Don't go any further. Uh, because because you've passed the test and so on and so forth. Okay, but that's a nice shot. A very clever shot. Uh, I think I have to go, Rabbi. Go.